time for another GCN Tech Clinic, and this is where we answer your burning tech questions that you've been commenting in the comments section underneath previous videos. So, Ollie, without further ado, what's our first question for this week? Uh, this week, uh, we've got a question from Andrew Birdsey, who says he's got a new disc brake bike and he wants to run latex tubes. The wheels are not tubeless compatible. Um, if I get a puncture with latex tubes, can I fix it or do I need to get a new tube? Thanks. Oh. Officially, I'm going to say no, latex tubes are not designed or advised to be repaired. I have, however, in the past seen people repair sort of small um, like pinholes in them by using your sort of normal puncture repair methods or by getting a section of latex tube which you've cut from a damaged tube from before, sticking that over the top. Um, personally, in my opinion, I wouldn't look to repair one. I don't think it's worth the risk. I'd rather spend £10 buying a new inner tube than risk a blowout on a crash or just the inconvenience of another puncture. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That um, answers that. Uh, next question is from Peter H. Oh. He says, uh, hey guys and gal, I've recently started road riding and have entered myself into my first 100k ride. Nice one. Yeah. Um, it's the Giro de Pembrokeshire and it's on September the 4th. Mm. Other than miles on my bike, is there any tech tips to help me train and prepare to complete the 100k? Um, do you want to kick things off with this, or shall I? Well, I think I would always okay. say, um, whatever event you're preparing for, the golden rule for me is always specificity. Mm. So try and replicate the demands of your event in your training, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I think that's a really good point in terms of what distance and elevation, maybe yeah. the sort of key ones to look at. Yeah. Um, in terms of bike tech, so you could prepare. I'd make sure you've got a saddle that you get on well with. Maybe yeah. you've got a new bike um, and you're trying some bits out. Make sure you ha don't change anything just before your event. You want a comfy saddle, good quality pair of bib shorts. 100%. I think that's the main thing yeah. is don't get, don't do the, mis right, the, the most important thing is make sure your bike is working. Yeah. Don't do the thing of tinkering with it the night before oh, or no. waiting for the night before to check your bike and then discover there's problems or tinkering with it. And I'm just gonna change it. my brake pads on the day of the event. Yeah, no, make sure that in good time before your big event, it's all working nice and you've cleaned it and it's all good and um, that'd be good. In terms of spares, I'd make sure you've got some essentials with you, sort of mm. tube, pump, multi-tool, a phone, um, just the essentials that you, it will get you out of most situations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, next next question. question we've got from Mekong Velo. Right. Say hi, GCN team. Right, oversized pulley wheels. They say Shimano, Campagnolo, and SRAM have all got some pretty damn smart engineers working on their designs, building a test in their various group sets. Now, they say in theory they must have all tested oversized pulley wheel systems to see if there are any advantages, but none of them seem to have them fitted on their group sets, even the top tier stuff. Are they fashion over function or sort of a marginal gain over an imaginary gain? Where right. do you think should we start with this? Well, I think the first thing to point out is that the big group set manufacturers, you're right, do have fantastic engineers working on the product. Very smart but people. The group set, they're looking at a whole host of different problems when they're trying to yeah. solve a group set and when they're trying to create one. They're incredibly complicated products. Yeah. And the difference is, is you've got you know, people here who are focusing in all their attention on just one small part of the puzzle and trying to optimize further one bit of the puzzle. Yeah. And you'd say that, you know, if if no group set is is, is Perfect. They're very good, but if they were absolutely perfect, then how do they keep improving it and making it better with each There's subsequent always generation? Games to be made. Yeah. yeah. And so what you've got here is people focusing on one very small part of the puzzle and trying to further optimize that. Um, I think the other thing to factor in is that yeah, like for all their critics and, and stuff, you know, you look at a company like Ceramic Speed, and the, I've seen critics label them as like marketeers, but. The founder and head of Ceramic Speed, yeah. he he came from a, a, a credible and legit background, working for one of the largest bearing companies in the world, SKF, and then l left to do his own thing. Mm. He's got a credible background, you know. I think there's what sort of springs to my mind is that group set manufacturers have got to cover lots of different bases yeah. and characteristics. They need to factor in cost, longevity of stuff, like shift performance within their group set. Whereas, like you say, the oversized pulley was really dialed in on one aspect. Yeah. Uh, what I yeah. would, what we have to say though, and and, and uh, you know, this is this is the key message. 
is that if you've got a limited amount of money to spend on upgrading your bike and making it faster, then while there, there you know, is likely to be a very small gain from using yeah. oversized pulley wheel systems, it is that. It's a very it's marginal, a marginal gain. gain product. And it's, it's yeah. pretty much the cherry on top of the cake. You, you should really not allocate your money to that unless you've done the so other many other things before it. You know, tires, drivetrain, you know, better clothing. Even like body positions. Body the first position. Place to start, like, yeah, yeah okay. you know, wheels, everything. There's just, yeah. I think, I think we've covered off in a, in a fair way. Hopefully yeah. people can understand where everyone's coming from. Um, right, next question in is from Dave Pratt. He says, Dr. Bridgewood, specifically addressed to you, mm. please put on your geek glasses. <laughs> I love that you had those to hand. I love that they're, well, the you thing always is, have them to hand. they're not my geek glasses, they're just my glasses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, step one, done. Could you right. answer the question? So they say they know 160 millimeter discs provide greater braking force than 140s, but why is that? Uh, it's a greater diameter disc, which means there's a greater moment yeah. from the central axis of where the disc is, which means you have greater leverage on that disc, yeah. uh, which means you can put more force through it. And also, the larger diameter disc has a larger surface area, which means you have greater heat dissipation too. Thanks, that was incredible. Next. Um, do you need to remove the glasses or are you okay with those? Yeah, I'll go back to being stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Per Jensen, All right. which I say, yeah. hi there. Seeing the speeds on the descents in the Tour de France makes me wonder how many kilometers per hour or miles an hour a tire is rated for or it can handle. A car tire has got speed and load index. What about bike tires? Right, it's a good question yeah. because, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, so this is something that has... Um, yeah, I, I think bike tyres are all designed within the realms of any speed that's going to yeah. be experienced yeah. by any normal rider yeah. under any circumstances. I mean, even going well over 100 kilometres per yeah. hour on a descent, and that happens very rarely, um, and within safe operating temperatures. I think maybe if you're getting above 50 degrees C out on the yeah. road in the desert, I would maybe start to worry, but how often do people experience that? I think I've never seen a... I've never seen, I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist, a speed rating for a bike tyre. Never. No. There are instances where this does become actually something that people consider, and that's usually in the realms of land speed records on bikes. Yeah. So, for example, when we've looked at land speed record bikes in the past, mm -hmm. they're using specialist tyres, yeah. and the tyres can become an issue. But it's, that's like the real rare yeah. thing, you know. Cars have got to deal with much higher loads and forces put through the tyres, whereas on a bike, it's not really relevant. Yeah. So, okay. Next uh, is from A and G DIYs, who says, <laughs> Hey guys, I'd like to buy soon a new bike equipped with 105. Since the DI2 version came out, should I wait for a new version of its mechanical group set or should I kick, stick with the current R7000? Well, uh, I think you might be waiting an incredibly long time for the mechanical version of the latest 105. As far as I'm aware, and you as well, I don't think there is one planned. It's no. just electronic only. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think if you want to have mechanical shifting, you either need to stick to the previous generation 105 or move to one of those sort of group set tiers down, or just look at what's offered by other manufacturers. You yeah. know, there's alternatives, you've got SRAM, you've got Campagnolo, and there's also some of the lesser known brands from China doing um, group sets as well. Or with the mm. trickle down tech, yeah. you're looking at Tiagra now. Yeah. But Tiagra now has stepped up so much that it, it is equivalent to what 105 was. So, you know, that's an option as well, and it'd be a bit lighter on your wallet. Yeah, you're going to pick up some good bargains on the previous generation 105 as well. Yeah, yeah. If you can find there's still bikes for sale yeah. that have mechanical 105 on. So okay, yeah, right. Um, on to our final question from this week. It's from Dave Morton. He says currently have a bike um, that started with eight-speed Claris. He's up upgraded oh, it nice. to ten-speed Tiagra. Does the gap between the dropouts mean I cannot fit 11-speed group sets? No, I don't and upgrade believe it further. No, I don't think it does. Um, the rear dropout on sort of almost all modern road bikes is the same. Yes, yeah, standardised. It's the same width. Um, I don't think it's changed between. Uh, I mean, the the rear of dropouts is different between a quick release and a disc brake bike. But he's not talking about upgrading the frame. So I don't think you need to worry. Straight, what you what, answer, what you're likely to find is that on your free hub, there's a spacer fitted behind the cassette. Oh. 
Yeah. And that facilitates the different spacing and the slightly shorter cassette on the 8-speed and 10-speed cassettes. Once you switch to an 11-speed cassette, you remove that spacer. You don't no longer need it. Um, yeah. And it should work. Yeah, there you go. Simple answer. Yeah. Nice. Um, apologies, as always, if we didn't answer your question. And if you be really persistent with it, keep commenting yeah, just on keep previous coming. videos. We'll, yeah. we'll try and get around to it. Eventually, Eventually we'll get there. Yeah, we will. Um, right, keep your comments in and we'll see you next week. See ya.